The Warner Brothers Studio Stores, a dazzling shopping environment that embodies the magic of the Warner Brothers Studio family. Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 20 stores that don't exist anymore. For Borders, it is, yes, the end of the story. For this list, we'll be looking at retail outlets that were once the pinnacle of your shopping experience and are now a faded memory. Have you ever shopped at one of these places? Let us know in the comments. Number 20. Sports Authority Like many retail outlets, Sports Authority was a casualty of the mid-21st century. Founded in 1928 by Nathan Gart, a series of mergers and acquisitions allowed Gart Sports to become the place for sporting goods in the United States. But by 2010, the tired retailer found it difficult to compete with the likes of Walmart and Amazon and began falling behind in its financials. By 2016, the company chose to close down and liquefy its assets. The clock has run out for Sports Authority. The sporting goods retailer plans to begin going out of business sales as soon as this Friday and will close all 463 stores by the end of August. Its brand name and intellectual property ultimately ended up in the hands of its competitor, Dick's Sporting Goods. Sports Authority has gone bust, as you know, and when they went bust, they did something that's so common now with failing retailers. They sold off all their dossiers on people who ever shopped at Sports Authority. Number 19, Wet Seal. If the 2010s taught business anything, it's that the shape of retail shopping is changing. Super Founded as Lorne's in 1962, this fashion retailer was incorporated as Wet Seal in 1990. They also sold their clothing and accessories under the Arden B and Blink brands. By 2015, they were faced with heavy competition, forcing them to close several locations. Orange County retailer Wet Seal is drowning in debt, and now employees accuse the company of leaving them high and dry. Hundreds of Wet Seal stores were suddenly shut down today, leaving thousands of workers jobless. Store windows could be seen with protest signs from employees over communication from managers and compensation. Wet Seal closed all stores in January 2017, another victim of the so-called retail apocalypse. This is just another sign of tough times for retailers. The Limited, Sears, and Macy's have also announced closings this year. As of January 2023, their website still says, under construction. Number 18, Tower Records. Long before the days of Spotify and Apple Music, people had to go into a store and purchase their music. Tower Records came to San Francisco when the city was at the center of the music world. It was opened in 1968 by Russ Solomon, who wanted to expand his family's Sacramento music store. Enter Tower Records. In their heyday, they were one of the largest retailers of music around the world. Based in the U.S., they spread to over a dozen countries worldwide. The movie Empire Records was even inspired by Carol Hickenen's time as an employee there. What you doing, man? I'm exercising my veto, man. It's only 9 o'clock. I mean, you sure you want to do that? Mark, listening to this crap is guaranteed to make you sterile. Okay, maybe I want to be sterile. Yet, with all that success, bad business decisions and the launch of the digital music era killed off this giant in 2006. A changing music business, the advent of being able to get music through your computer, on sites like Napster and iTunes, doomed the record store along with Tower's overly aggressive expansion. The brand did resurface as a website in 2020 and continues to sell music and merchandise online. Number 17, Comp USA. When you hear the term big box store, you may think of IKEA, Walmart, or even Costco. One such player in this space was the now defunct computer store, CompUSA. All across America, computers are changing people's lives, and one company is changing the way people buy them, CompUSA, with the brands you want all at guaranteed low prices. A purveyor of technology products, they were very similar to competitors like, say, Best Buy. And therein lies part of the problem. CompUSA employees were told of the sale at a meeting this morning. The company had been losing money against competitors like Best Buy. Their corporate strategies were out of touch, and they were destroyed by the competition. They were eventually sold to Systemax in 2008, and their last CompUSA stores were rebranded as Tiger Direct, which also phased out of retail in 2015. Tiger Direct is a top 25 online retailer with over 200,000 products and retail store locations. Number 16. 
KB Toys. It was 1946 when brothers Harry and Joseph Kaufman opened their own candy store, aptly named Kaufman Brothers. I'm a kid and you're my toy store. You're easy to like, cause you're just right. You're my friend, KB. That quickly turned into a wholesale toy company in 1948 and a shopping mall staple in 1973. In the 1990s, a series of additional acquisitions brought the company hundreds of new store locations, totaling 1,324 by 1999. In creating the new KBKids.com, we went to the experts. They know what's hot. Now you can too. They know exactly what's right for them. But a combination of both a poorly timed dividend deal in 2002 and a drop in sales the following year sealed the company's fate. Neither a bankruptcy filing or a restructuring of the company was enough to keep it afloat. The company had been looking to liquidate more than 100 stores across the country. The closing was a disappointment to this dad, who's been coming to the store over the last two decades. This is one of the better ones, so kind of sad to see it go. They were eventually sold to their biggest competitor, Toys R Us, in 2009. Number 15. Warner Brothers Studio Store. In 1991, Warner Brothers entered the retail space, selling the likes of Looney Tunes and DC Comic Books merchandise. Eventually opening 130 stores across the country, the chain thrived for a short time. It's been an incredible ride so far. The studio stores have been one of the fastest and most successful retail store ventures in history. Successful beyond anyone's most optimistic projections, including mine. However, the AOL Time Warner merger was completed in 2001, and the newly formed company had new plans. AOL's acquisition of Time Warner cost over $160 billion, making it one of the largest mergers in history. At the time, it seemed like a really good idea. With sales in decline and retail shops floundering in general, the newly formed conglomerate saw the writing on the wall. It took them less than a year to put the nail in the coffin on this chain when their last store closed on New Year's Eve 2001. Well, that's all, folks. Hey, that's my line. Number 14, Payless Shoes. Much like many of the other stores on our list, Payless started with humble beginnings only to fall victim to our ever-changing times. But you can get these same shoes at Payless for $19.99 or lower with our epic holiday deals. Why pay more when you can pay less? Formed in 1956 by cousins Louis and Shell Pozes, Payless became known for its unique line of shoes called Pro Wings, as well as a plethora of other footwear-related products. Now all $9.99 sandal and canvas shoes are just $8.99. Two pair, $7.99 each. Three or more, $6.99 each. At the Payless Shoe Source, buy more Payless sale. But but in the midst of the retail shift in the 2010s, Payless filed for bankruptcy twice, eventually shutting down all operations in North America. Payless closed all of its remaining North American stores, more than 2,000 of them, in 2019 after filing for Chapter 11 for a second time. The company emerged from bankruptcy in January 2020. They do continue to operate stores in other parts of the world and online. Number 13, Ames. Department stores have always been common in big cities, but when Ames opened up in 1958, they went after the retail market in much smaller populated areas. It's coming to every Ames discount department store to make sure these advertised sale prices are as low as you'll find anywhere. This led to a boom in business and expansion, which reached up to 327 stores. It did not, however, come without a cost. Poor decisions around consumer credit resulted in a bankruptcy filing in 1990. The company survived and by 1993 was turning a profit again. Oh, I, I saved $11. $20.99, wow. $10.50. I saved $41. But the success didn't last. By the turn of the century, Ames had begun closing many of its stores and filed a second bankruptcy in late 2001, which saw the end of this store. Or did it? Rumors of a reopening in 2023 have surfaced. Time will tell. This comes 20 years after the discount chain uh, went out of business, so that'll be something else to see. Number 12, Tivana. No matter how large a corporation gets, you have to remember that they all started out small. Such was the case for Andrew T. Mack and his wife, who formed Tivana in 1997 with a little tea house in a mall. The brand became so successful that it only took 15 years for Starbucks to take notice and acquire them to the tune of $620 million. This is the first tea bar 
that Starbucks, a coffee company, is opening. What should we read from this move for Starbucks? Well, people don't realize we've been in the tea business for the last 40 years. The name persisted for five more years before Starbucks pulled the plug on all 379 Tivana shops. Starbucks is shutting down hundreds of its Tivana branded stores. That includes all four Colorado locations. Their entry into the tea market has since dropped considerably, as Starbucks now only sells a very limited number of Tivana products. Introducing Tivana Passion Tango Pineapple Sparkling Tea Juice, made only at Starbucks. Number 11. Sharper Image. Similar to Sky Mall and Hammaker Schlemmer, Sharper Image was a catalog business that thrived on high-tech gadgets and niche products. Every month, three million people receive this catalog in the mail, and thousands more shop in 48 retail stores around the country. Today, it's unusual to meet someone who hasn't heard of us. Distinguishing itself from the other catalog companies, they expanded into retail, opening 187 stores throughout malls and airports across the United States. I have to get this. I Harry, have to get this. We're here for Jess and Marie. I know. We'll find them something. There's great stuff here. Oddly enough, it was an air purifier product that ultimately helped kill the company. After Consumer Reports gave fail ratings to their Ionic Breeze products, Sharper Image sued. The Ionic Breeze Silent Air Purifier with Ozone Guard that can actually convert smog and ozone into oxygen. Cleaning and circulating your air with no fans, no filters, silently. However, they were themselves sued by customers for misrepresentation of their product. As the blame went back and forth, upper management changed and consumer interest tapered off. The company went bankrupt in 2008. Number 10, Circuit City. Welcome to Circuit City, where service is state of the art. Founded in 1949 under the name Ward's Company, Circuit City was one of the most popular consumer electronics stores in the United States. During their peak, the chain boasted more than 550 stores across the country, offering plenty of electronic goods and services. They even had a chance to buy out the fledgling Best Buy operation in 1988, but declined when Circuit City's CEO thought they could just put them out of business. Well, that didn't work out in the long run. When 2007 rolled around, wages were being cut, locations were being closed, and management turnover was high. Electronic retailer Circuit City has announced it's unplugging more than 150 stores. In Maryland alone, three locations are going out of business. By 2009, the company pulled the plug, and the days of Circuit City were over. Number 9. A&P. The Great Atlantic and Pacific Tea Company existed from 1859 to 2015. Known to most customers simply as A&P, there was a time when they were a huge player in the grocery business. We built a proud new feeling at a &P. From a few retail shops selling tea and coffee in New York, the company blossomed after being acquired by George Huntington Hartford. From there, over much time, it became a full-on grocery store, which would eventually have roughly 16,000 locations. AMP pledges guaranteed value. We guarantee the quality of all our meat and deli products. Produce too are double your money back. We also guarantee the lowest advertised prices. However, by the 1970s, the stores had become conceptually stale and plagued by bad customer service. The chain did manage to have a bit of a comeback in the early aughts, but was short-lived, and it finally went under in 2015. Many customers have shopped here for years, and they feel emotional. Everybody angry. Everybody's angry. Yeah, very bad. Was we got no store over here, no place. Number eight, F. W. Woolworth Company. It's May Value Days at Woolworth with savings for everyone. Did you know that Woolworths may have been the original inspiration for the dollar store? Founded by Frank Winfield Woolworth in 1879, it opened as Woolworth's Great Five Cent Store, which sold everything for a nickel or two. Although that operation didn't last, the subsequent store became successful. I'm the new chairman of Woolworth, and I believe in 1981, we're going to offer you better value than we've ever done before. Frank brought in his brother, Charles Sumner Woolworth, and the two began a journey that would see their ideas about retail continue to be used today. Woolworths was highly successful until the 1980s, when stiff competition forced them to shift their priorities to their sporting goods division. Competition is the name of the game at Foot Locker, with the biggest selection of big names ever assembled. So whether your game is serious or social, we'll find the right shoe for you. In 2001, they became known as Foot Locker and are still selling sporting goods today. 
A few dozen Woolworth stores do still continue to exist in Mexico under different ownership. Number 7. Sam Goody. Goody, Goody, Sam, Goody got it. Goody, Goody, Sam Goody got it. Sam Goody got it. Much like many other music retailers, Sam Goody became the victim of the digital revolution in music. Founded in 1951 as a small music shop in New York City, it eventually merged with Musicland, which helped expand the brand. At its peak, the Sam Goody branded stores expanded to 800 locations and brought in several billion dollars worth of revenue. It had become almost synonymous with music retail, which held it above water for a long time. But after struggling through a handful of acquisitions and changes to its business model, the stores began to close. By 2012, most of the stores were gone or simply rebranded as FYE. Number 6. Borders Hi, I'm Jason Schwartzman. I'm Wes Anderson. We are at the flagship Borders in Ann Arbor, Michigan. Ever since Gutenberg revolutionized printing so long ago, books have been in demand. This human desire to learn or enjoy stories is what eventually spawned the likes of giant bookstore chains like Borders. Operating for nearly 40 years, this bookstore saw its peak with over 500 US-based stores, and even more via other brands and franchising. By the time 2007 rolled along, however, the company had begun to struggle to remain in business. Well, I hope this store can stay, um, because I frequent this store and uh, I want to support it. Several attempts were made to keep it going, but by September of 2011, the chain had come to an end with its stores closing and rival chain Barnes & Noble buying its trademark. Getting the news today, it's upsetting. We tried. We tried. We gave it our best. Number 5. Fry's Electronics Remember, your best buys are always at Fry's. Guaranteed. The sale of Fry's Supermarkets chain eventually spawned a completely new type of electronics store back in 1985. The intent was to make shopping for electronics a similar experience to going for groceries. Whether it was circuit boards, software, or any other kind of electronic device, Fry's was the place to get it. Uh, Fry's was famous for its unusual exteriors and motifs like the Mayan themed store here in San Jose. It was actually one of the few places you could buy raw computer parts off the shelf to assemble your PC on your own. The stores ballooned in popularity, and even the aforementioned Circuit City didn't offer the same kinds of fare. It's a shame to see it go away. I mean, we basically, I grew up with, you know, going to the store a lot to, you know, buy everything from my TVs to video games, and, you know, unfortunately, they're going to have to find somewhere else to buy all that stuff now. But after decades of sometimes controversial business practices and squeezed by the COVID pandemic in 2020 and long-standing market pressures, all their stores ceased operations in February 2021. All 31 Fry stores across nine states closed effective immediately. Are you a customer? Not any longer, it would seem. <laughs> Number four, linens and things. If there is one common thread connecting many of these now defunct businesses, it's that for many of them, a combination of acquisitions and management changes seems to be their undoing. Formed in 1975, this home textile and housewares big box retailer grew considerably by the time it opened its 55th store in 1983. Linens and Things, keeping America's homes beautiful through quality selection and 20 to 40% off regular prices every day. It was acquired and then eventually spun off as its own entity again in 1996, but then reacquired by Apollo Global Management in 2006. The company then truly began to find itself in financial difficulty. But the nail in the coffin came with the credit crisis. Possible buyers couldn't get credit to purchase the company, and now 371 stores are set to close by the end of the year. A series of losses combined with a decline of sales eventually forced the company to pull the plug on their stores by 2008, going online exclusively. Number three, Radio Shack. So much more than just a store. The best in America, Radio Shack. Nobody the humble beginnings of Radio Shack began back in 1921. The company focused its sales strategy on radio and electronics hobbyists. For decades, this gave them a lucrative market to fill, and interest in electronics eventually grew even further with the new computer and video game age. 
It was also Radio Shack that produced the famous TRS-80, one of the first widely available home computers. Let your children discover tomorrow's technology today. The TRS-80, the biggest name in little computers. Only at Radio Shack. But much like many other retailers, their popularity declined with the rise of online shopping and fewer hobbyists to buy their wares. Though perhaps more damaging has been the retailer's failure to attract younger shoppers. By 2017, the company had gone bankrupt and was no longer the giant retailer it once was. With a smattering of stores remaining under different ownership and eventually the brand being scooped up to attempt viability online. What? The 80s called. They want their store back. Number two, Toys R Us. Who doesn't remember wanting to be a Toys R Us kid? From toys to video games to books to bikes, this was a chain that had almost everything a child could possibly want. From bikes to trains to video games, it's the biggest toy store there is. She wins! But like many retailers over the last few decades, they struggled to keep up with the times and competition with the likes of mass market stores and online shopping. It was unprepared for what no one saw coming, the dot-com era and the rise of the big box store. In 2017, the chain filed for bankruptcy and began liquidating their assets. By the middle of 2018, they had closed most of their U.S. stores, with the last two closing in 2021. Yeah, I feel like kids are going to miss out on the best store ever. I still love the store. However, you can still find Toys R Us stores across Canada and Asia. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into settings and switch on your notifications. Number 1. Blockbuster One of the biggest industries to emerge from the creation of the VCR was the home movie rental business. Fast checkout, 24-hour quick drop return, open late every night. Well, the perfect video store... Welcome to Blockbuster Video! ...is popping up all over the country. There's one near you. At the inception of the movie business decades earlier, no one had ever expected people to want to watch their movies at home instead of at theaters. With more than 30,000 stores open globally at its commercial peak, if you wanted to rent a new release, odds are you went to Blockbuster Video. Oh, plus they have all kinds of video games for the kids. Video rentals became ingrained in our culture, and Blockbuster profited mightily. But as streaming services and mail-in DVD options became available over the years, the days of Be Kind Rewind were over, and Blockbuster famously ceased to be. Its various partnerships folded, and stores worldwide were rapidly plunged into administration. We're closing early. Its 9,000-strong chain had been reduced to one single franchise in Bend, Oregon. Number five, Fry's Electronics. Hey, Fry's and Electronics, that'd be something. Did you enjoy this video? Check out these other clips from WatchMojo and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.